Hello, everybody. Yes, the answer is yes. We're about to clown on TFP some more, probably. Let me just uh, bounce over here. Hello. It is me. Remember when they promised bandits like two alphas ago? Yeah, you know, I do. I do remember that. Which is, is funny as hell since there's that NPC core mod, you know, the one that adds uh, bandits and other uh, such characters to the game, including NPCs you can hire to be your friend and shit like that. You remember those? It's almost hilarious. You remember, you remember that, that interview that we reacted to? You remember that? The interview where they were like, yeah, we don't really uh, pay attention to the modding community when some of the changes they've done have been clearly things that were uh, previously mods. But not that one. Not, not, not that one. Here's a bunch on Seven Days Die is going into beta testing. Ooh. At least they were smart enough to not put Joel in front of a camera again. Yeah, they learned their lesson with that interview to not put Joel... <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. All right. I'm going to give it another, like, what time is it right now? 4.02 on my, my phone. I'm going to give it until 4.05. And then we're going to watch this sh video. It's, it's, this is not going to be a long stream. Like, we're basically going to watch this. We're going to discuss it uh, for a little bit. And then once I feel like we've covered our all of our bases i'll just call it quits because today technically was not supposed to be my stream day but uh you know it, i couldn't not sounded like a cya thing for not acknowledging mods and then introducing things that mods add yeah yeah it's gonna be a disappointment like everything else they do time to get angry i'm always angry that's my secret, Captain. Oh, God. Like, I, I hope... I hope that it's at least, like... This stream is merely a setup to misery, probably. I, I hope that they at least have, like, something good to announce with this video. I have no clue at all what they're going to talk about in this. I don't. I have no clue what any of this is going to build up to or what it's going to show. I have not watched any of this. Put some blinders. What are mods? I I don't know. I don't know. There's only gold. You know what? We're going to we're at this game. We're going to do all of the great things to this game when it goes gold. Maybe this will be them uh making good on their promise. They'll be like, "Yeah, this is gold. We're we're releasing it. So now we're going to fix all of our shit, right? 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 Oh goodness. Post alpha edition. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh pre beta. Who decided to change how several core game mechanics work because players have been checks notes finding solutions. Uh, we don't like um, how people have been finding solutions to all of our POIs by nerd polling. Meanwhile, last I checked, uh, I can still nerd poll. They said that wasn't going to be a thing anymore. I am fairly certain I can still nerd poll. So, like, fight me. We added backwater jars. And the whole fandom was kind of like, okay, but we have mods that do that already. I'll build POIs for them. That'll solve a lot of it without disabling nerd polling. I'm aware you don't like nerd polling either. For different reasons, though. The player has been living more than seven days. This is unintended behavior. Wait till you see the new, new POI I just finished. The thing of beauty. Is it another sorcery one? No more nerd bowling. Every POI is underground now. Players dig straight down. Anger to no, I mean if not if robot's the one doing it. Robot is taking in that shit into account too. The fucking ice castle. 
Um, all right, we're a minute ahead, a uh, minute over. Yes, it's our fourth tier four or five, depending on what the playtester says. Nice. All right, we're at time. Let's begin. With more than a decade of development, Seven Days has accomplished more than our team or critics could have ever imagined. After nearly 12 years, many consider Seven Days to be the crown jewel of survival games on the market today. Pause. All right. Pause already. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Who said that? Hold, hold, hold the phone. Hold on. Hold on. Today. imagined development seven days has accomplished more than our team or critics could have ever imagined after nearly 12 years many consider seven days to be the crown jewel of survival games on the market today can i get a quote on that can i get can i see some citations um i, I need a I, I need to see your your citations here that we're going back to high school can you show your work um where did you pull this information from More than a decade of development is not a compliment. No. No. Many equals my mom's. <laughs> uh, Ark would like a word. Even Ark, though, like. I, I, I don't. We've seen our game and audience grow and evolve over the years. Uh -huh. It's been shown at trade shows and had countless early access releases. We've had a few speed bumps along the way. Had countless early access releases. Alphas. The word you're looking for is alphas. And there has not been early access releases, plural. It has been a, it is in early access and has been for 12 years. Like you can even count them, you know, two of them, too many. But we think the team, community, and game are ready for the next steps. I'm Richard Hunick, co-founder of the Fun Pimps and creator of Seven Days to Die. Why does he look like he's dying? Like, I don't know if it's like his sitting position or something. Like, I know this is like probably just me being pedantic. But why does it look like he's sitting, like, you know, you ever see the movies where, like, the main character walks into a room and, like, their best friend or, like, one of the other characters is, like, shot in the chest or something and they're bleeding out, like, sitting on the floor, leaning against the wall, like, I tried to hold him off as best I could. You're gonna have to go without me. And then the main character's like, no, 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 you'll be fine. We'll get you through the, you're gonna have to go without me. Take my weapon. Go. I'll hold them off and like they're holding a fucking grenade. Like that he's sitting like that. He's sitting against the wall looking like he's about to like fucking hold back the tides of fucking angry customers. Fucking angry gamers that are about to be shitting all over this. We've watched our audience grow. Yeah, because they're talking older. <laughs> uh, I love shit talking TFP with y'all. It's a good time. You're welcome. His posture is at a weird angle. He does look like he's sitting on the floor, right? And I'm going to share the details about Seven Days to Die, leaving early access, and the launch of version 1.0. These are bullets I'll have to resort to. Stabbing! <laughs> <laughs> Up to this point, we referred to 1.0 as Alpha 22, but internally, our plan has always been for Alpha 22 to be version 1. It's been the source of a lot of excitement for the team and what the future holds for the game. I don't remember that ever being mentioned. I may be wrong, but I distinctly remember them never mentioning that Alpha 22 was supposed to be the release patch. Because Alpha 22 is like... 90% cosmetics, not bug fixes, they said internally. But then that kind of feels like they lied earlier. Like, not lied directly, but like lying through omission. Because they previously have said that, like, 
after Alpha 22, they have other shit that they need to work on, like Bandits, which would be in a later Alpha. Ten years ago at some meeting, hey, Alpha 22 sounds like a good time to go to, <laughs> to V1. Yep. Not optimization, not fixing the fucking drones, not fixing any... No, 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 no. But they're going to make it look pretty. That's what the player base wants. They want it to look pretty. That's it. Just, just pretty. What does that mean for the game? It means everything we promised is still coming. We haven't forgotten about our remaining Kickstarter goals and the features we promised over the years. We are still planning on supporting Seven Days to Die, as we always have. Many of those features will be outlined on our roadmap. Future. Okay, hold on. Now remember, these dates are rough estimates and subject to change. Let's see. So June is the 1.0 launch, with July being the console launch. Okay. Character system, armor, clothing, overhaul, console launch. Completely remade vehicle assets, new animals, new gore system for zombies, zombie variants, new challenge, new props, road decal, new POIs, updated, visual effects, graphics. Optimize it. Robot. Robot, look. Look. They said optimization. That means they're going to do it, right? They're definitely going to do optimization now. They have it right there. It says right there. Hello. Is it good? No, we're shit talking. Oh, okay, we're we're okay. we're a minute and twenty nine seconds in. <laughs> I've already had to pause the video like what eight nine times. Bandits aren't coming out until next year. Fuck <laughs> right. Everything we've promised is still coming. Sounds like a politician. Random gen improvements, updated controller support, Ugh. other other updates to systems not listed here. Other updates to system, uh, updates or revamps, because they're going to probably try to reinvent the wheel a couple times, is my guess. We've paused and critiqued it longer than we've played the video. True. Translation: We want that console money. Yeah, give me that console money. All right. Anyways. Future alpha updates will turn into major content patches. We will still have experimental builds with stable releases. Wait, hold on a sec, because I didn't even look at the right side of the screen. Hang on a second. Q4 2024. So later the end of this year. Okay. Weather system and biome progression overhaul. Wardrobe system. What the fuck's a wardrobe system? Crossplay random gen for... Co oh. Plus additional, what is that little tiny fucking, what does this say down here? The little tiny fucking. Additional zombie stages, spawn near friend, Twitch drops, outfit DLC. Hold, hold on a second. I need, I need to get, I need to get my readers on here. Is there a way I can? I can't. Excuse me. I can't. I can't zoom in on that. What does that say? Outfit DLCs. You are going to charge money for cosmetics on a game. That is. I. I'm gonna get angry. I'm gonna get angry. I'm already angry. What else do they got? Q2, Q2, 2025. Okay, so second quarter next year. Bandits. UI main menu overhaul. Why does that matter at all? Event system. Okay, great, good, good. New quest type. What? What else are they gonna add? Racing? Oh, wait, actually, fuck, that'd be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool, actually, having, like, racing quests go from, like, trader, what, like, one trader to another. Oh, God, that would actually be kind of cool. And if they have bandits in the game, you could race against ba- Oh, that would- Okay, someone hire me as a developer. I, I have good ideas. 
Road ahead. Trader overhaul. Story mode. Wow. Guys, we can get story mode by the end of next year. Steam workshop support. Uh-huh. New quest. Another new, new quest. Oh, wait. This is plural. New quests. All right. Okay. What did I miss in chat? You know, this makes me think of way back when Starbound was stuck in early access and practically abandoned for years. I mean, it feels like that. Best thing to ever do is games optimize and abandon it. Let the modding community do what it's already doing. True. Subject to be delayed two to three years because let's be real. <laughs> We've decided to add a battle I swear to God, if they add a fucking battle pass. If they add a battle pass, I'm going to fight somebody. No, it's <laughs> like an abandoned steal. It, I, mm, I would hope not. And it's building piece already in the game. I have access to them for builds. Oh. Realistically, next proper update is creating an actual zombie virus and having us all be put through it. I mean, yes, there are certainly mods that do that, though. But, you know, of course, they can't acknowledge the modding community. But they can acknowledge the Steam Workshop community. Be awesome if the vehicles weren't absolute ass and the roads don't get got me started. That is fair. I mean, I like the motorcycle. That's about it. New quest, go kill bandits. Steam Workshop, no mods aren't real. Uh-huh. Yeah, fuck us, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. It's going to consoles and other PC markets once they're ready. So when does 1.0 launch? We're currently planning for an experimental release in late May and a stable 1.0 launch in June. We'll have exact release dates as we get closer. With the launch of stable 1.0, the current retail price of the game will increase to match the cost of the new console edition, which we'll cover later. I Okay. If you currently own Seven Days to Die on PC or purchase it before 1.0's launch, then nothing will change. You will still get all major free updates coming. The only real change is that anyone who has not purchased the game by the launch of 1.0 will have to purchase it at a new price. Speaking of sales, we're running a last chance week-long deal starting next Monday on Steam. We are sharing this because we wanted to give all players the opportunity purchase seven days on Steam at the lowest discount before the price goes up. 76% off because if they did 75%, they couldn't say it's their biggest sale yet. This week-long sale will start April 22nd. So if you're still on the fence after 10 years, it's never been a better time. The number one comment we hear on social media is, when is the new Seven Days to Die console version coming out? Uh -huh. Folks, you won't have to wait much longer. The game looks great and runs surprisingly smooth. And that means Seven Days... What do you mean surprisingly smooth? Why is that surprising? You're the ones making it. Number one comment is go fuck yourselves, you scared fuck. Time to buy a few hundred copies and sell them back to people at normal price to others. Yeah, just stock up on a fuckload of Seven Days to Die codes. Really? That's what you hear the most? Console what? No, they actually do, Devouring. Like, I've seen a lot of their Twitter posts are, like, the first, like, five comments are console when. Because it's surprisingly janky PC. Seven Days to Die PC 1.0 stable will be the launch version for consoles. We are working on the exact dates know that it's coming soon after 1.0 launch on PC. Consoles will launch digitally only and certain features like crossplay and generating additional random gen worlds may come in post-launch patches. May come in post-launch patches. Emphasis on may come. Not it will be there. Not we you will definitely have crossplay. It's a maybe. Translation, nah. Yeah, right. Legacy delist and discount. So, what does oh, that mean for the legacy console version owners? 
Due to the differences between old and current hardware, the Legacy Edition cannot be upgraded, and the new version will have to be purchased. However, we are working closely with Sony and Microsoft to provide a discount to the digital Legacy console version owners. We'll have more news on this in the coming weeks. Also, when the new console edition launches, the Legacy version will be delisted from the digital storefronts. You'll still be able to play the old game, but can no longer purchase it. This is being done to avoid product and brand confusion. Today we posted a comprehensive fact alongside our work in progress roadmap image, with more details coming soon. Next week, we'll hold the last chance sale. After that, our focus will be on getting 1.0 Experimental out, followed by the full 1.0 stable launch on Steam. We'll have more information on 1.0's official release, console's release, and the roadmap's planned release dates this summer, so stay tuned. When we first set out to make Seven Days to Die, we never thought our game would bring this much interest or have this much success. This would not be possible without the continued support of our incredible community who have stood by us for over a decade, and we thank you for that. We will continue to support Seven Days to Die for as long as our community is hungry for more content. But know this, Seven Days is our team's greatest passion and TFP will continue to make content and add new features and grow this franchise because it's our favorite game too. We look forward to a bright future with many exciting releases. Thank you for watching. They didn't mention the price. That's it. Okay. Y'all, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Discuss. What did what did I miss in chat? Imagine buying a game and getting cold, told to screw you buy it again. To be fair, their shit code was made worse by the people that bought it for a console. Oh, point of expert. oh. Looking to the side far too much to read script. That entire thing was fucking script. Not an ounce of like genuine passion or excitement was anywhere in that video. None. We're going to try and sell a lot of copies, then we'll fix it. Promise. Because we did that last time, right? It wouldn't be possible without the modding community, which we refuse to acknowledge. Thank you for not letting our game die. Fucking seriously. What was it? I think it was, what, between Alpha... Was it between Alpha and 18 and 19, or 19 and 20, where there was just a huge content drought? Franchise, it's a single game. What, that mean it's their franchise? It's 40 bucks or something I saw? Oh, that's terrible. That's, that's awful. Why would you charge that? Like, 30 bucks would be more agreeable in my opinion. Still a little bit ridiculous, but like, if you buy it on sale, like, okay, that's fine. 40 bucks though? Eh. Really feels like they're gonna go full release and just abandon it. Well, I mean, yeah, they have to focus on their action game, their their Seven Days to Die Blood Moon game. Rating, yikes out of 10. There's a sign that he's lying. Oh, absolutely. Still better that Joel wasn't involved. Oh, Joel would have made it a whole fucking shit show. Worse of a shit. It would have been a steaming, burning pile of shit. Flaming pile of shit. There we go. Devouring, I kind of get that vibe. Release this thing. We'll make a bunch of things we swear. Side eyes the abandoned ship button. <laughs> this is the best case. <laughs> Hydrate, K. Okay. I... I am so disappointed. Like, I thought there was going to be... Well, I don't know what the fuck I thought it was going to be. I was hoping that maybe there would be a little bit more to it. Like, a, hey, Alpha 22 is going to have a little bit of extra stuff. Feel exactly as I expected to. I mean, I do still feel pretty fucking angry. More likely, release game drastically cut back stuff. Claim to still be working on it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, hold on.
Hold on a second. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. I could have sworn that I remember them saying that once the game goes gold, once the game releases, that they are going to basically just have, like, a skeleton crew working on, like, maintaining the game. And then everybody else is going to be working on new projects. So which is it? Are they going to release in June and that's the end of it? Because, like, that roadmap that they showed definitely did not convey the same thing that they said they were going to do. Not if they're going to be releasing now. You know? Uh, audio, my thing. Oh, uh, hello. Hello, this thing on. Oh, hi. Okay. I don't know what the fuck happened. I hear you now. Okay. Uh, I was saying. I think you just can't mentally digest the sheer volume of bullshit we just heard. I mean, you're not wrong. Thought it was my end. No, I probably something on mine. Since uh, Faye and I are both streaming at the same time. But like, the, I, I think what gets me is that, that little tidbit there that was the outfit DLCs. Like, I'm sorry, but what do you mean outfit DLCs? You are going to charge people money for cosmetics in this game when I can just mod it. And just get something that looks better. Or just probably get exactly the item that you're selling for free. I'm really disappointed by most modern game development. Fair, but I mean, TFP is a particular kind of developer. Like, they're, they're something. Remember when the console version had a cosmetic DLC for The Walking Dead? Because it did. Did it really? DLCs, microtransactions, battle passes. Yeah. Particularly bad. Yeah, Telltale had Walking Dead character models. Console. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I... I, uh... I don't even know what how else like the, the fucking audacity to introduce cosmetics. Honestly though. Paradigm got bought out by another company went instantly to DLCs. Ugh. Ugh. They're just gonna steal and release them as mods. Exactly. Like why am I gonna pay for cosmetics when I could just put a mod on? I can forgive DLCs, microtransaction, battle passes for free games, but not games that you have to pay for it even play. Yeah, I mean, serious, like, I can understand, like, if it's a, like, an MMO, for example. Like, MMOs, I don't like battle passes. But, like, a cosmetic DLC for an MMO where it's, like, you buy it once and then you can play it forever or whatever. Like, okay, that's something different. This is a game that has been around for a long time, has been in early access alpha play, for years, 
And now that you're suddenly getting close to releasing the game, you have the audacity to say, we're increasing the price of the game, releasing it on console, and ho oh, hey, by the way, we're also going to be adding cosmetic DLCs. Give us more money. And that's before they even checked all the boxes that they made promises for on Kickstarter. All of their, their Kickstarter like roadmap shit, they have not done all of it. And yet they want to start throwing cosmetic DLCs into the game before making good on all that. I refuse to give forgive battle passes. FOMO is terrible. It is. It really is. Why well, everyone is so pissed at Blizzard for Diablo 4. I enjoyed Diablo 4 for the time that I played it, and now I will not play it again. Simple as that, really. It was fun for the short time that I played it. That was it. Don't worry, they'll start bricking games soon enough if you ever think of modding their game to bypass their DLC. I mean, I would not be surprised if they started really cracking down on uh, the modding community when they do start releasing DLCs. Because they already did that for, um, uh, what was it, Mischief Maker? Right? Because Mischief Maker, they had it where, like, because they now have the Twitch extension, they basically forced Mischief Maker to stop what they were doing. Because of the fact that they were losing out on money because of it. Like, shit like that. They're probably gonna, like, release DLCs and be like, hey, if any of you modders, any of you do anything even remotely close, we're gonna come after you. Be Rising announced they're going full release and increasing price. They're still introducing new DLCs. Uh... Double 4 is fun, but I don't care about its battle pass at all. Yeah, fuck that. Private server is incoming. <laughs> Give me Diablo 4 DLC and I'll dive in, but I won't for seasonal FOMO. Ugh. I could have sworn that 7 Days was on some consoles already. All in all, it feels like it would have ran fine on an Xbox 360. It did, but only up to a certain alpha. So Xbox and PlayStation, they have 7 Days to Die, but because of some legal shenanigans and bullshit with Telltale... Um, they basically lost the rights to the game, so they couldn't update it any further. So it was stuck in alpha like 15 or 16 or whatever. I think it was alpha 15. Whereas the current 7 Days to Die is on alpha 21. But now that they are like re-releasing the game basically, they're going to be having it catch up to being like current alpha. Or sorry, release. It's actually kind of funny, too, that they're calling it Alpha 22, but Alpha 22 is supposed to be the release patch, so it's more like Seven Days to Die. That's it. It's not Alpha 22, it's just Seven Days to Die. Why is it Alpha 22? Why is it called Alpha 22, then? So then what happens at the end of the year when they release their first major patch? This is uh, version 2.0. Yeah, yeah, version version 2.0. Aha. Alpha 22 V1 experimental official release electric boogaloo. Perfect. Perfect. S sell it like that. Just like that. Ah, uh, God. I. Uh. I would say I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed, but I'm also angry. I'm angry and disappointed. Like, just, guys, come on. Why? But I wonder if Seven Days to Die will become another experience like Destiny 2 where you'll be expected to buy the game multiple times over to be able to get the experience they want to give you. It's for the console people that bought it way back. I mean, I, I do think they genuinely wish that they could have just updated the console version from back then. But also, I'm sure they're not totally upset that they're going to get to uh, cash in on a bigger price point for the new console version. And I mean, they're cutting corners too. They're not doing like a physical release. They're only doing digital sales. So it's not like you could just go buy a disc to throw in your Xbox or PlayStation. Like Ark, the new Ark is that? Ugh. Wonder if they'll put all the alphas off Steam. Oh, I would hope not, because I'm sure there's plenty of us that would rather play the old stuff. At least then we knew what we were getting into.
to be fair, nobody wants discs. I mean, there are still some people out there that do buy physical release just for, like, the collection. Physical releases are pretty much dead. You will not get to own games anymore, just rights to play them. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that part's not, not wrong. Unless you're able to pirate the game and then you just keep it on your own hard drive and then there's nothing they can do about it. But a lot of games these days, it's like, requires internet connection to play. It's like, alright, great, cool. That's That's great, thanks. Depending on the version of Xbox, it doesn't even have a disk drive. That is true. Which is also kind of sad, actually. For an Xboxes, you don't even get the game on the disk. Disk only serves to verify ownership. That's depressing. I would love to be able to still collect physical copies of games that I like, but it's almost all indie games. True. All this connected thing. The community is starting to rebel against. Good. I should not have to have an internet connection to play games that don't require anything on the internet. Games don't fit on discs anymore. I mean, that is fair. That is very true. I mean, sell them in fucking, like, flash drives or some shit. Imagine an arc disc, the 30 disc install, only because of lazy coding. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a way they could probably compress it to actually fit. What's the point of a disc when you have to update it day one anyway? That is true. That's actually kind of sad to think about is like the way game development has gone as a whole now. It's like you can't just get a game and play it because there's going to be some day one patch update thing because they fucked something up in before release. And it's like, so you mean to tell me you made this game, released it, without first making sure that you caught as many of the bugs as possible. When storage got super cheap, devs stopped giving a shit about how much space their stuff takes up. True. I mean, with Steam, I remember reading something a while back about how your account is forfeit if you die, meaning no one else will acquire your account. Don't know how hard they enforce that or have ways to, but it, that's kind of fucked up. In the cartridge days, it mattered. Oh, the cartridge days. Remember when GTA 5 felt like an absolutely massive game and it's like 30 gigs. I mean, you're not wrong. I remember, I fucking, what was it? Like back in like 20, oh God, when was that? To like 2004, 2005, you get vanilla WoW and it was on like four discs. And that shit took up like what, 15 gigs? And that was crazy. You mean you all don't like downloading a 300 gig game to take up space on your computer and not enjoying it? No. Still write code as though I have limited space to work with, but I'm old. Well, I mean, that's how people should be writing code. I remember installing Doom 2 with 14 floppy disks. <laughs> oh, shit. Floppy disk games. Uh. Odd. Yeah. Code and Exiles, anyone? Oh, God. Look, I know that AI programmers like you are the future, but you don't need to rub it in that you're taking their jobs. Take their jobs! I don't like downloading a 300 gig game on my crap internet. I mean, forget if you have a, a PC that particularly likes to overheat, forget it. You can roast marshmallows on your fucking computer downloading shit like that. Only game I don't mind having crazy download is BG3 since it was a proper game. True. BG3, they at least are, like, taking ownership and are updating it and making sure that the game is good before they call it quits. My literal job is to eliminate jobs through automation. Resist Robot Overlord? Shh, shh, not, not on stream. Shh. I don't want to get in trouble. Because BG3 is a fully-fledged game? True. True. Unlike Seven Days to Die which they're about to release without it being a fully-fledged game. And then they're going to say, give me more money to buy the game. But also, it's not done yet. But also, we said it would be done before we released. Larian is a proper studio that gives a shit about their games and their community. Very true. I remember reading a thing just like yesterday or the day before where they said like, 
our their next big step is making sure that they have like a proper modding uh like the modding tools like released to everybody so that the modding community can really go ham and they're adding in their own like customizable shit to the game so if you want to make it where all your stats are fucking like low as fuck or some shit like you could do it that's how you make a fucking game that the community wants BG3 had more content in 45 seconds than almost all of a sudden. I mean, fucking serious. The entirety of Act 1 is more content than Seven Days to Die. They have it in Divinity. I fucking love it. Created so many custom classes. Right? Like, that, that's the thing. Like, Divinity is such a good game, too. Like, ugh. Ugh. All right. Okay. I think I've gotten it out of my system. Mo more or less. I'm still pretty fucking angry. I, I was originally thinking like, oh, I'll take this VOD and I'll upload it to YouTube. But it's like, n I, I, if I upload this to YouTube, I am going to get in trouble so fast with the amount of cursing and just... I, I, I can't. I can't. I'm going to get in too much trouble if I try to leave, release this shit. I'll leave it to, uh, oh god, what is the fucking, there's a YouTube channel I watch. Um, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, it's like, it's, it's something, I, ITZ, uh, what is it? Um, fuck, what's his name? Uh, oh, it's like, uh, it's Prebuilt, I think is his name. Is, is Prebuilt. It's IZ, uh, Prebuilt. He he loves to shit on TFP and has gotten in trouble with it with them before because of it. So like I'll let him do all the shitting on it because it I get a good kick out of some of his takes on it. You have not? I don't know what you're talking about. I fucking love it here. Thanks. I love it here too. You're gonna be mad for like a week, then after a week you'll still be mad but able to repress it. I mean, not even. I'll be mad until I'm on vacation, and then I will be just so happy. You cursed within a minute, you'll get demonetized ins instantly? Oh, absolutely. Currently installed on my computer that I think are worth their size. BG3, Arizona Sunshine 2, Near Automata, Monster Hunter Rise, Amnesia, The Bunker, Fucking Risk of Rain 2. Fair. Fair. Those are all solid, respectable games. looking at my desktop right now i have a weird amalgamation of games on my desk whatever all right i'm gonna call it quits here before i i get any deeper into some some bullshit <clears throat> that was fun though so okay i have tons of things installed because eventually i'll play them and don't want to download them when i do i mean i don't have that kind of storage space on my computer to do that but there are others at a large size that I don't think are worth it. Fair. Um, all right. So we are just going to go do a raid. Uh, we're just I'm just going to send you guys over to Faye because she's currently live and y'all should go support her. I have like five terabytes at this point. Jesus Christ. I have nowhere near that much. So, all right. Uh, thanks, y'all, for watching. No, do not do the raid command. No, we're not. It just We're not going to do that whole bullshit. We're just going to go over there. I'm not going to, we don't need to do any of the commands because this was just kind of an impromptu short stream of me hating. So, all right. Thanks y'all for watching. Like I said, I'm going to be on vacation, so I will not be back until uh, Friday, May 10th. And I don't know what I will be doing, but we'll figure something out. So let me just do a trade. I'm just going to drag in. Okay. There we go. All right. I'll see you all later. Glad to catch up with some of y'all and have some stupid shenanigans watching this video. And I'll I'll see you all in my Discord. I'll be on there uh, chatting it up while I'm on vacation, most likely. So, yeah. I'll post pictures and something. I don't fucking know. Uh, anyways, bye! <laughs>